Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I have five tips to build a simple meditation practice. I get a lot of email about, am I meditating right? How do I do this? I don't understand. And I get it because sometimes it's not very clear. So I wanted to talk about it a little bit more today. I know we talk about it here and there, but there's no reason why we can't review it for those of you who are already meditating. And if you don't have a meditation practice already going, this show is for you because it is exactly one of the big game changers in relieving anxiety panic. It's good for a lot of other things too, but when you can actually start being in the present moment for a good set of time or a preset of time on a daily basis, things begin to change. Your brain actually begins to change. But one of the most challenging things is to get a new practice started. You know, it's like starting the flywheel. Once something is going, it's easy to maintain it, to keep it going. But that heavy lifting of getting something started can deter so many of us. So how can we remember to go and sit when we've not made this a part of our lives yet? For many people, and myself included back in the day, I needed an alarm right? Or a powerful reminder, if you will, to get me up in the morning. I used to need an alarm clock. I don't anymore. But we have no problem setting our alarm clock or our apps to wake us up from our sleep. Like it's just natural. You think I don't wake up on my own, so I have to set an alarm. So why not use the same idea to help you find your time to sit, to sit for meditation? Building the new habit of sitting or for being in meditation or prayer time is no different from starting any new routine. It takes practice. Now, one of the tips that you can do is to add it to something else that you're already doing. This would be like habit stacking. So I did this recently with my dental flossing which I wasn't always really good at, like I would do it here and there. And I just decided one day, no, I talk about other people changing habits and other people adding things to their lives. How come I can't add this one? So I just added it to my regular nighttime brushing, which would seem like it's just normal, but I hadn't been conscious about it. I had just been kind of willy nilly but I made a commitment. And now I would feel weird going to bed without doing my flossing. So I think it's easy to add those things to something that's already set in stone. Like putting my contacts in in the morning, there's no way I'm going around the day without doing that, right? That would be another good place for me to add something that I wanted to add. As soon as I put my contacts in, I would do X, Y, Z. What do you have in your life that you do regularly, routinely, without even thinking about it? Maybe you can add your meditation sit right there with that thing. So starting a new meditation routine or practice takes practice in and of itself. We may forget, we may procrastinate, and we may self-sabotage for various reasons. Sometimes having someone in our life to remind us can be helpful and sometimes not, right? It could feel like nagging or just another to do from an already lengthy list of things to do. So be careful who you ask to remind you because you don't want it to feel like they are nagging you and be careful that you don't make it 
just another to-do on your to-do list. This is something that you want. I, I, I want you to want it. I don't want to want it more than you want it, <laughs> but I think I do sometimes. So, because I know the value of it. I know that so much can change for you over time if you can add this into your life. Now, of course, you're not going to notice it right away. You may not notice it for a long time. That's why it's so tricky. That's why it's so easy to procrastinate or just forget about it, just to say it's not helpful. So I'm not going to do it. I don't get anything out of it. You're not going to get anything out of it in the moment. What you get out of it is over time and it is irreplaceable. Now, I've talked about the benefits of daily meditation for anxiety many, many times here and there, but it never hurts to have a refresher. So let's look at some of the things that our time in meditation helps us with. It helps us with relaxation. Now, we don't do it to relax, but it will help us with our relaxation. I hope you can get that. Like, don't think I'm just going to go sit and I'm going to coming out of it in total relaxation. No, but over time and in certain circumstances, some days, it helps with relaxation. It teaches you over time how to go there. Like we don't even know how to relax anymore. We're so busy in our minds. We never shut it down. We never are with it. We're just letting it kind of run wild that we don't ever really relax And we can learn to come back to the present moment through meditation. And through that, we can learn how to be in a more relaxed state. It will also help us with acceptance because there's no denying when you are sitting in the present moment that there are things there and you have to accept them. There's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. We're not going to scroll on the phone. We're not going to do anything. We're going to accept what is there. It's very interesting. It's just like this beautiful place (laughs) and you can't deny it. It's there. It will also help you with distress tolerance, which is a huge stumbling block for anyone who has anxiety. Distress tolerance needs to be learned. And we learn how to do this in meditation. We learn how to sit through distress, little distress and big distress. So practice when you are sitting and you get a little itch. I learned this with my meditation teachers many, many decades ago. Sit with the itch. Let it be there. Like if everybody in a big meditation room were scratching everything that itched or wiggling every little tight muscle, I mean, it would be, it would look crazy town. You learn to just sit with it. You learn to tolerate the little distresses. And the beauty in that is the more you can tolerate those small distresses, the more you will be able to tolerate the big ones. Again, it's building the muscle. We must learn to tolerate distress. People with anxiety are distressed and fear even small things because it doesn't start there, but the more in fear that the mind is marinating in, the more everything becomes fearful. Everything is a stressor. Everything causes distress. So this is important to learn distress tolerance and you do it in meditation. Another thing that you will learn over time is how to respond versus react. And again, that is from just sitting and being. You're not going to react to everything that goes through your mind. You will learn to respond to them. You will not be reacting to every little pain and itch and irritation. You will learn to respond to them. It takes time, but this is where we can learn it. And we also are helped with metacognition, and that's having an awareness of thinking itself. This is super important to be able to actually know that you are thinking, not that you are your thoughts. You are seeing yourself and I'm seeing myself as so much more than the thoughts that are 
going through our minds. We are seeing that we are thinking. We are not thinking that we are the thinking. We can see it. We are separate from it. And we can see that with metacognition. I have a little more, but I want to thank today's sponsor before we get going there. Today we have thesis with us. So you've started a new routine. You feel amazing. But how long will those changes last before you lose your motivation? Thesis can help you follow through on all your goals and make them your new normal. This is something we talk about here all the time, so why not get a little help? Thesis makes personalized supplement formulas that are specifically designed to boost cognitive function. And I want to point out here that you can even ask for the caffeine-free formulas. They have awesome formulas, but if you are caffeine sensitive, be sure to ask for the caffeine-free option. It's based on science, the science of nootropics, which are natural and powerful ingredients that do include caffeine, but also ginseng, B12, that increase productivity, focus, energy, and mental clarity. Take their three-minute online quiz, and Thesis will recommend high-quality nootropic formulas that are unique to you and your goals. Imagine what you could do with Thesis. Right now, Thesis is offering our listeners 10% off your first starter kit when you visit takethesis.com slash ACP. Go to takethesis.com to take this quiz and discover your unique nootropic combination and save 10% off on your first starter kit. That's T-A-K-E-T-H-E-S-I-S dot com slash A-C-P. Make sure to use our URL and let them know that we sent you. I think you're going to like feeling energized without the crash, cut through the brain fog and to think clearly, or get a little help with motivation to find your flow. Thank you, Thesis. So let's get on to get into the practice that makes all these profound changes in how we see everything, including our relationship with anxiety. So why don't you begin by deciding that this is going to be your anxiety clearing tonic and it takes 10 minutes a day to take it, right? It's almost like I gave you this magical tonic And I told you, you have to sit down and it takes 10 minutes for you to sip it all down, but it is going to help you with relaxation and acceptance, distress tolerance, help you to respond rather than react, help you with metacognition and actually lead you out of the wormhole. Well, that's what I'm saying. It takes 10 minutes a day to take this elixir. Ideally, you will be sitting for maybe 10 to 20 minutes a day, you know, when you're there. But I want you to start wherever you need to start. I have people start at five minutes. I have people who don't want to do five minutes for various reasons, and we start at one minute. If you can't start for the 10 minutes, start with five. And if you say you don't have time or can't sit for five, Like I said, sit for one. The whole idea is in the beginning to sit every day. And we can all sit for one minute every day. We want to set up the routine. Just like I was talking about habit stacking before. You want to find somewhere where when you do X, you immediately go and sit afterwards. You're going to add this. You're going to stack this meditation habit right on top of whatever it is that's already set in stone. I have had people that did it with their lunch hour. They said they would go into their car or truck every lunch hour to either make phone calls or scroll or eat their sandwich or whatever. I mean, that was routine that had been set in stone. And instead they went to their car and rather than maybe after they ate their sandwich, then they did their meditation. Something that you're already doing. I would love for you to explore those places in your day where you could do that. 
For some people, it's as soon as you wake up. That could be a wonderful time to meditate. It's a beautiful time to meditate. But you have to make that a habit. That is the first point of sitting for just one minute a day is to establish a new routine. We can all do one minute. If you like guided meditations, you can use those if you want. I would prefer that you learned to sit with no words, but maybe you could use music or environmental sounds, waterfalls or birds or whatever. It's good to hear things, but sometimes the words can get in the way. But if you need guided meditation with words, start there. We can always refine it later. We want to establish the habit first. And again, you can always go to music or environmental sounds, and you can choose one minute, five minute, 10 minute. There's, they're all available. The point is, in the beginning, to build the habit and to sit daily. So, do you need some help to get there? You can use an app or an alarm clock. We use the alarm clock to get us out of bed in the morning. You can use it to tell you it's time to sit, too. Maybe that's all you need is an alarm that goes off that says, two o'clock, it's time to sit. Maybe that would be all you needed. You can also use that same alarm to set your time. I don't want you to be wondering what time it is, right? I don't want you to be looking at your phone or your clock to see if you've sat for a whole minute yet. So set the alarm and then let it be. Just know that the alarm will go off when I'm ready to stop. So here's some ideas, five things that you can do that you can kind of weasel your way into doing this without it being too hard. First one is to keep it simple. Like I said, if you need to use guided meditations, use them to get you started. Use an app with timed music. Find the thing that will work for you. The second thing, remember, there is no wrong way here. We all start where we are planted and we grow from there. Falling asleep is okay. All that means is that you were tired. It's okay. Don't be hard on yourself. There's no wrong way to do it. The third one, move on to your silent meditation time as you feel comfortable and ready to. So if you started with guided meditations and you did that for a month or two, then you decided, you know, I really think I have this down. I'm used to coming and sitting at the same time every day. I think I'm going to try silence. It would be a good idea for you to reassess after each month so that you don't just do one minute a day for the rest of your life. Every month, it would be good to reassess. Am I ready to move on? When you're at one minute or five minutes, you may want to reassess at a couple of weeks. But do reassess because you can grow in this and you will be able to sit longer and it will feel not like a struggle. The first struggle is just sitting to begin with. The fourth one is to set up a routine and stick with it each day at the same time and the same location. Again, this is just because we're building a habit. Obviously, if something comes up and you have to do it at a different time or a different place, so be it. Don't be hard on yourself. But the best thing to do is to give yourself a break and not have to make a decision every day. When am I going to sit? How long am I going to do it? Have it set up. Give yourself a break and not have to make extra decisions every day. Just make a plan and stick with it. And the fifth one is I want you to give yourself permission. You have permission to sit every day. I hear from so many people, I can't do it. I don't have time. I'm a mom. I'm a dad. I'm busy. I have all these things on me. I want you to give yourself permission to do it, even if that means that you do it when you first wake up in the morning before you get out of bed or when you get into bed at night. No one is without a minute between a minute and 20 minutes a day for themselves. 
It's just our own choice as to what we are doing and how we are going to make this work for ourselves. So the first thing is for you to give yourself permission to do that. And then a little bonus tip, I want you to pat yourself on the back for showing up to better your health and your well-being. Every time you sit, give yourself a smile and say, well done. Before I read today's quote, I was wondering if you prefer the show without ads, or perhaps you might like to have access to the entire back catalog of over 600 episodes. Maybe you'd like some bonus meditation episodes. All of that and more are available for five bucks a month with our premium Supercast membership. Go to anxietycoaches.supercast.com and join us ad-free today. The link will be in the show notes. And now for today's quote. Meditation is not about stopping thoughts, but recognizing that we are more than our thoughts and our feelings. And that's from Ariana Huffington. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com.